What's happening, crypto fam? Happy, happy Thursday. Th I'd actually look at the day then to check it was Thursday. Good morning. Welcome back to Love for Crypto. I'm Scott. It's a pleasure to have you here. I appreciate taking out time to consume the content. So thank you. And today I want to talk about an article that was published in April. It ended up going quite pretty much all over the gaff. Loads of people talking about it. And now people are talking about uh, the Great Reset and a possible depression and blah, blah, blah. I think there's a lot of people expecting another Great Depression and maybe even a greater depression during the 2020s than what we saw in 20, the end of the 2020s and the 2030s in the last century. Now, I actually believe myself that the Great Reset is actually the safety net. It's going to stop. It's going to pull us out of a greater recession rather than it needing to be like 10, 6, 6 to 10 years of um, hard times, should we say. So let's have a little read of it. The coming greater depression of the 2020s. 10 trends that will make this a decade of despair for the global economy. <clears throat> After the 0709 financial crisis, the imbalances and risk pervading the global economy were exacerbated by policy mistakes. So, rather than address the structural problems that the financial collapse and ensuing recession revealed, governments mostly kicked the can down the road, creating major downside risks. That made other, uh, another crisis inevitable. Anything in this you don't really get, feel free to, links in the description, there's loads of hyperlinks in it to take you to the anything you want to um, explain in further depth. Um, so we'll just breeze over it today. Thoughts and opinions in the comments as always, please and thank you. Now that's arrived, the risks are growing even more acute. Unfortunately, even if the greater recession leads to a lackluster U-shaped recovery this year, an L-shaped Greater Depression will follow later in this decade, owing to 10 ominous and risky trends. The first trend concerns deficits and their corollary risks, debts and defaults. The policy response to COVID-19 crisis entails a massive increase in fiscal deficits on the order of 10% of GDP or more, at a time when public debt levels in many countries were already high, if not unsustainable. Worse, the loss of income for many households and firms means that private sector debt levels will become unsustainable too, potentially leading to mass defaults and bankruptcies. Together with soaring levels of public debt, this all but ensures a more anemic recovery than the one that followed the Great Recession a decade ago. A second factor is the demographic, uh, the demographic time bomb in advanced economies. The coronavirus crisis shows that much more people spending uh, much more public spending sorry, must be allocated to health systems and that universal health care and other relevant public goods are necessities, not luxuries. Yet because most developed countries have ageing societies funding such outlays in the future will make the implicit debts from today's unfunded health care and social security systems even larger. The third issue is the growing risk of deflation and mainly debt deflation. In addition to causing a deep recession, the crisis is also creating a massive slack in goods, unused machines and capacity and labour markets, mass unemployment as well as driving a price collapse in commodities such as oil and industrial metals. That makes debt deflation likely. Again, Google debt deflation, slightly different than normal deflation makes debt deflation likely increasing the risk of insolvency. The fourth related factor will be currency debasement. The central banks try to fight deflation head off the risk of, and head off the risk of surging interest rates following on from massive debt buildup. Monetary policies will become even more unconventional and far reaching. In the short run, governments will need to run monetized fiscal deficits to, appro uh, to avoid depression and deflation. Yet over time, the permanent negative supply shocks from accelerated deglobalization and renewed protectionism will make stagflation all but inevitable. If 
few hyperlinks there. If you want to go deeper into that, I'm not expecting everyone to get every bit of it. I'm not, not going to sit here and act like I understand every little bit of it and exactly how it might and is going to play out. But we're speculating, researching, and we're questioning. <clears throat> A fifth issue is a broad or digital disruption of the economy with millions of people losing their jobs or working and earning less the income and wealth gaps of the 21st century economy will widen further to guard against future supply chain shocks companies in advanced economies will re reshore production from low cost regions to higher cost domestic markets but rather than helping workers at home this trend will accelerate the pace of automation putting downward pressure on wages and further fanning the flames of populism, nationalism and xenophobia. I mean, wait a fear monger, bro. That's a nice good fear mongering paragraph. We would need to consider universal basic income and everyone gets a thousand pound if you can't earn it. Everyone gets a grand a month. Everyone gets a thousand dollars a month. Everyone just gets a grand a month. If you can't, if you can't earn it, you'll just be giving it, mate. You'll just be giving it. And I want all the motherfuckers who are moaning about that now as if it doesn't already happen to just shut the fuck up because it already happens to the tune of between 3000 and a £1,000 a month already. It's just that some people don't get enough and some people, you could argue, are getting too much. It needs to be a fair up system and a level playing field of everyone across the board getting the same amount of value when you're not in work or you can't work. Simple. We point to a six major factor deglobalization the pandemic is accelerating trends towards balkanization and fragmentation that were already well underway the united states and china will decouple faster and most countries will respond by adopting still more protectionist policies to shield domestic firms from workers from uh, and workers from global disruptions protectionism and all this shit now in it the post-pandemic world will be marked by tighter restrictions on the government of uh, on the movement of goods, services, capital, labor, technology, data, and information. This is already happening in the pharmaceutical, medical equipment, and food sectors, where governments are imposing export restrictions and other protectionist measures in response to the crisis. The backlash against democracy will reinforce the trend. Populist leaders often benefit from economic weakness, mass unemployment and rising inequality. Under conditions of heightened economic insecurity, there will be a strong impulse to scapegoat foreigners for the crisis. Blue-collar workers and broad cohorts of the middle class will become more susceptible to populist rhetoric, particularly proposals to restrict migration and trade. This points to an eighth factor the geostrategic standoff between the US and China. With the Trump administration looking like it's on the way out. <laughs> this was April, so bear with it. The Trump administration making every effort to blame China for the pandemic. Chinese President Jinping regime will double down on its claim that the US is conspiring to prevent China's peaceful rise. The Sino-American decoupling in trade, technology, investment, data and monetary arrangements will intensify. Worse, this diplomatic, this diplomatic breakup will set the stage for a new Cold War between the US and its rivals, not just China, but also Russia, Iran and North Korea. With the US presidential election approaching, there is every reason to expect an upsurge in clandestine cyber warfare, potentially leading to even conventional military clashes. A final risk that cannot be ignored is environmental disruption which as the COVID-19 crisis has shown can wreak far more economic havoc than a financial crisis. Recurring epidemics, HIV since the 80s, SARS in 2003, H1N1 in 2009, MERS in 2011, Ebola in 14 to 16, a likely climate change, essentially man-made disasters born of poor health and sanitary standards. The abuse of natural systems and the growing interconnectivity of a globalised world. Pandemics and the many morbid symptoms of climate change will become more frequent, severe and costly as the year, in the years ahead. These 10 risks already looming large before COVID-19 struck now threaten to fuel a perfect storm that sweeps the entire global economy into a decade of despair by the 2030s. Technology 
and more competent political leadership may be able to reduce, resolve or minimise many of these problems, giving rise to a more inclusive, cooperative and stable international order. But any happy ending assumes we will find a way to survive the coming Greater Depression. Good article, bro. It's a really, really good article, that. Really, really good. The thing at the end, he says at the end, the technology, the safety net, the technology, that's that's the big one for me. The great reset is the great safety net. And we're going to use the digitalization to actually save the global economies from a great depression. So you've got fandom. I don't know whether, uh, like, when you're a geek, everyone knows about fandom because all the uh, all the universes and stories go on there about characters and stuff. It's like a Wikipedia. Only admins can change, so not anyone can change. You've got to be an admin. Basically, people predict the future on it, and someone's predicted an economic depression of the 2020s, the poor world. Um. Start at start in 2019, going on to 2041, 17 years, nine months. Leftward shift, leftward shift in global politics. This is actually quite, quite interesting. I must admit, and again, the link's going to be in the description if you want to have a read. But it's got from the beginnings, Reagan, the Bushes, and Trump, COVID-19 pandemic. Early crisis, a changing world from 2021 to 2027. I mean, it, it, it just having a little laugh with it. Socialist Party by 2030. It's interesting. China's wars come to an end. It's like he's, he's imagining China have some civil wars. Or oh, she. Don't actually know who wrote it. But it's interesting. And uh, the World Economic Forum have pushed their Great Reset conference. They've pushed it now. It was supposed to be in January. It's now sometime in the middle of next year. And I'm honestly just waiting for that and the IMF review. And there's no talk of the IMF SDR basket review. So I think they're just going to do the review. And any news that comes out of it will just be exactly that in the news in the next several weeks or months. So we legitimately just have to stay patient and see what happens. Patience is key. What it's all about, and it's gonna take them time. Anything from now, anything from now to 2025, and I think we're going to see it kick in. But again, we're going to see the market hit its arse first, I think. We're going to see signs of a of a coming depression, 100%. And then the Great Reset will kick in. Digitalization will be the safety net and, and pull us out of it. You know what I mean? Nomi Nomix Finance. Let's get on Nomix Finance. Let's have a look at the price. Is it pipped 18k the other day, didn't it? 17.7 .7 still. Damn. Damn. I mean, that is... On the brink, innit, guys? It's on the flaming brink. Crazy, crazy stuff. So, let's... Uh, let's just enjoy the ride. Get a bit of patience. Bit of gratitude that you're in the game and let's just enjoy the ride. This rain's horrendous. You're probably gonna be out of it on the video, but oh well. On that note, I'm gonna go start getting to work. Casey should be here soon, the lad I'm taking in. Just... <sighs> Excuse me. Regardless of what happens. Regardless of what happens, we have to stay positive about the future. We need hope. Going nowhere without hope. 
And I think regardless of what comes out, regardless of what gets said in the mainstream media, whether it's about COVID-19, about climate change, about trade wars or whatever, just do your best to ignore it and concentrate on you and your machine and your dream. Forget all the politicians' dreams. Fuck them. And tear them down when we're good and ready. Let's uh, concentrate on our dreams first. Sorry. Sorry, I can't stop yawning. I'm knackered. But yeah, enjoy the rest of your week. And try and enjoy the journey. The journey is much more important than the destination. Remember that. If you don't enjoy the journey, you're probably... Most people ain't going to reach a destination if you're not enjoying the journey. So wish you health and happiness to you and yours. You know, all your dreams come true. Yeah. Invest in yourself. Invest in internet of value. We love crypto. We love XRP. And we love the internet of value, mate. We don't love the talk of um, Great Depression's really, but as I say, I do believe there's a safety net there. I believe the digitalization and, and digital economy can pull us out of it, so we'll have to wait and see. You know the dance. Live long and oddly it all until you're ready to let it go. Yeah? I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> until next time, guys. Take care. Peace.